Uh, hi there! My name is Rose Shards, but feel free to call me Rosie, Chloe, or whatever you want, honestly. Before I get into anything, I just wanted to apologize for the background noise. Whenever I record things or do anything like this, my fan, as you can probably hear it right now, gets really loud and annoying, so you guys are just gonna have to deal with that. Uh, but anyways, as several of you may know, Joanna recently hit 1 million views. In fact, it's my first and only video to ever hit 1 million views. And so, because of this, I figured I'd make a little video to celebrate. So today, I'll be going over some themes and inspirations for the map, I'll be answering some of your questions, and I'll even be giving you guys some tips on how to host a map and even be a great, great map participant. I think this video is going to be quite long, so if you'd like to skip to any section of the video, I'll be leaving timestamps in the description. So, as the majority of you know, Joanna is based off of the Warrior series by Aaron Hunter, specifically the first and second arcs. I've gotten countless comments asking me what exactly the story behind the map was, and I figured I'd clear some things up. And just before I get into things, I'd like to let you know that yes, certain things I have added in myself. Maybe not all the scenes happened specifically the way they did in the map, like they didn't happen the same way in the books. And yeah, I just thought that adjusting certain parts would really strengthen the project, so hope that's okay. Anyways, the map starts with Golden Flower and her newborn kits, Tawny Kit and Bramble Kit and they're all in the nursery. Tigerclaw, the father of the kids, walks in, and you can see this really strong tension between them. This is something I scripted in because I wanted to foreshadow Tigerclaw's reign of terror in the forest, and I wanted it to look like he didn't really care for his family all that much, and really just wanted to raise the kids to bring them up and be, to be as evil as him. And so anyways, the map then skips ahead to when Tawny Paw runs away to Shadow Clan to be with her father, who has now become leader after being exiled from ThunderClan. Brambleclaw understands her decision, and though he feels saddened, he escorts her to the border and essentially tells her he'll always be there for her. I imagined, do you think that walls can hide you? Even now I'm at your window, I am in the dark beside you, referring to the fact that even though they were going to be in separate clans from now on, they would never truly be separated, seeing as nothing is stronger than their bond as siblings. He is in the dark with her because he is also being judged for being the son of Tigerstar, and completely understands what she's going through. The next scene shows Tawnypaw and her father on top of the Bone Hill, where he is commanding his warriors to slaughter Stonefur. Tawnypaw was originally very excited to be with Tigerstar, but is ultimately sickened by his evil ways. As I had stated earlier, Tigerstar is exposing her to this brutality and trying to get her involved with this because he wants her to become like him. He sees his own strength and potential reflected within her, and wants her to become just as powerful as him. In fact, he challenges her softness by saying, and if you're beautiful, what then, with yellow hair, like wheat? Which I imagine meaning that she should strive to be more than just a warrior, and that she needs to toughen up and become like him. However, Tawny Paw is too disgusted and disturbed by this, and instead runs away from the scene. This angers Tigerstar, but ultimately he can't do anything other than watch her as she goes. He's internally upset by this, but brushes it off and hides it by simply saying, I'm fine, Tawny Paw, I'm fine. This next scene is the scene I definitely get the most comments and questions about, so I think it's really important for me to clear things up about it. The character that this scene focuses on is Goldenflower, the cat we know to be the mother of Tawnypaw and Bramblepaw. She awakens one day to discover that Tawnypaw has completely disappeared, and considering this is the child she raised and loved with all of her heart, she panics and lashes out on those around her. She accuses Small Ear, the grey cat, of being the reason she disappeared, seeing as he was recently making rude comments about her. Finally, she has to be calmed down by Sandstorm. I thought that the gibberish and panicked voice of the woman in the musical would really help put the terror and shock that Goldenflower experienced into perspective. In all honesty, who wouldn't react the same way upon discovering that their beloved child has gone missing? I won't go over these next scenes in too much detail because they don't have a ton of like in-depth meaning behind them, and so basically, Tigerstar is gutted alive during the darkest hour, and his two kids have to watch in terror. Bramblecon and Tawnypaw Sorry, Bramblepaw, not Claw yet. Bramblepaw and Tawnypaw make eye contact, but Tawnypaw looks away because she doesn't want to feel guilty for leaving ThunderClan, especially when her father died so soon after she left, so it was kind of pointless. She then becomes a warrior after a few moons worth of training and receives her warrior name, Tawnypaw. Tigerstar Spirit then comes to her in the night and leads her to the Dark Forest, where he already trains her brother and plans on training her as well, so they can still have a chance to become like him. Tawny Pelt sees her brother, Brambleclaw, and is immediately shocked by the huge scar he now has on his shoulder. Meanwhile, Brambleclaw is just happy to finally be with his sister again. Tigerstar then gets onto some stone in the clearing and basically tells her that he wants her to train with them and eventually become the leader of ShadowClan. This is symbolized by the red star that falls upon her head, which I will get into later. This, however, triggers a flashback. 
Tawny Pelt is reminded of all the harsh days she spent in ThunderClan, constantly receiving strange looks from her clan and being the center of clan gossip. She and her brother hide in the nursery as Goldenflower suffers from intense paranoia as she becomes less and less capable of dealing with all the judgments surrounding her kids. She believes everyone is out to get her and her kids and can only bear to stand guard and protect them from any potential dangers. This flashback really gets Tawny Pelt thinking. If she follows Tigerstar's bloody footsteps and kills her way to becoming the clan leader, then everything her former clanmates will have said about her will become true. She will become a murderer. And it would have been just because Tigerstar had been her father. Realizing the amount of times her mother had to suffer to protect them from these rumors, Tawny Pelt realizes this is wrong and turns to walk away instead. This of course angers Tigerstar. When he says, and though I'll think of you, I guess, until the day I die, I think I miss you less and less as every day goes by. I imagine Tigerstar essentially expressing that he's done with her, and instead of caring for her as a father should, he will simply stop showing any softness to her, though deep down he will always love and think about her because she is his kid. He then finally can't bear to see her turn her back on him once more and jumps down in an attempt to stop her, but she ignores him. Meanwhile, Bramblecock can only watch in shock and sadness, feeling upset that his sister has also gone to abandon him once more. He pushes his own feelings aside though and follows her to check on her, but she reacts angrily. She then exits the scene, leaving Bramblecaw alone once more. The outro with Bramblecaw killing Hawkfrost and Tawny Pelt watching from a distance was supposed to show how Bramblecaw got himself into this huge mess because he stayed in the Dark Forest. He could have avoided all of this had he followed in Tawny Pelt's footsteps, but because he didn't, he is now living through the consequences. Tawny Pelt watches, probably silently thinking to herself, I told you so, before exiting once more. That's a lot to take in, I know, but, uh, and there's still a little more I'd like to go over before I actually get to the Q&A session of the video. When I first heard the Joanna reprise from Sweeney Todd, I just knew I wanted to do something with it. I thought long and hard about who I'd have the map focus on, and eventually decided on it being about Tigerstar, Goldenflower, and their kits. And for the most part, it is all about them. But as I thought about the map and scripted it over the following months, I realized that Tawny Paul had actually become the main star of the map. The map focuses entirely on her decisions and the impact they had on her direct family, and how she left her brother to start her own life, how she followed in her father's footsteps only to let him down multiple times, and how she abandoned her mother without even a saying without even saying a word and left her to live with the aftermath. Tawny Belt has had to make some seriously heavy decisions, mainly just because her father was known as the most wicked cat in the forest. It was these experiences and decisions that not only shaped the world around her, but herself. What makes things more interesting is that she doesn't even say a word herself. Which is similar to how even though she changed so many things in the Warrior series, she was ultimately never as important as her other family members and was consequently forgotten for the most part. And now finally for the Q&A session. I'll try to answer as many questions while still keeping this section relatively short, because I know I've already spoken way too much already. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to start this off with a question that I get a lot, which is, what is up with the Red Star? Uh, the Red Star is basically supposed to symbolize the idea of Tawny Pelt becoming leader and becoming Tawny Star, but in like a more corrupt sort of way. Tiger Star presents Tawny Pelt with the opportunity to become a strong, powerful leader, but in order to get to this point, she would have had to become like him. She would have had to kill her way to the top, just as he did. Instead of the star being yellow and pure, it has instead become red and corrupt due to the evil she would have had to commit in order to lead. I thought it was interesting because Tiger Star is presenting her with so much opportunity, but this big opportunity would have to come at an even bigger cost. Though she would be a leader, she would in no way be considered an honorable leader. Milky Wave asks, what was Goldenflower referring to when she was singing about the fire? Well, Goldenflower's world has been turned completely upside down. She has just left the kids she brought into this world and raised, and she still has to deal with the constant judgment from her clanmates. She has no idea how to react to anything anymore and has become paranoid, and in a sense, it is as though everything she has ever known and loved is burning before her. I, I kind of hope that makes sense. I mean, I don't know how to really get into it without like going super in-depth, but I don't know. I hope that's good enough. And Woodruff Family asks, Did you ever think while planning this out that people wouldn't understand what was happening? And it was a concern of mine, yes. A lot of content had to be covered and explored within just five minutes, so a lot of scenes had to be quick. To my relief though, as the map started to come together, the parts flowed together really well and everything was really starting to fall into place. You really have to thank the animators for a lot of that though. And had they not worked so well together, a lot of people might not have understood the scenes as well. And... Cherry Stripe asks, how did you decide that this song was made for Tawny Pelt? 
And this one is quite tough to answer actually. I got into it a little bit before, but basically I just heard the song and wanted to find some character to fit it because I thought it would make a great map. I wish I could remember more clearly how I chose Tawny Pelt, but because I decided this and planned out how the map was going to play out around October last year, it is actually super hard for me to remember. I think that Tawny Pelt, sorry, I think that I thought Sweeney Todd's voice and overall personality would really match Tiger Stars, and uh, because the beggar woman in this scene uh, is Sweeney's wife, I figured, okay, well, I'll just I'll make her golden flower. And eventually, I decided it would only make sense for Brambleclaw and Tawny Bell to be main characters as well. And everything kind of evolved from there as I started to piece things together. Midnight Draws asks, how long did it take to complete the map? Well, I finalized my idea in October of 2017 and was likely thinking about it from September. I published the map in February and only six months later the final thing was up, but because of all the work and the thought process that went on behind the scenes though, it took more like 10 months. Elizabeth Rodriguez asks, Quick question, why does Small Ear, I believe, is the cat have floppy ears? Mainly answering this one because a few people have thought he was a dog, and I just thought it'd be super cute to make him a Scottish Fold because his name focuses on his ears, and Scottish Folds kind of look like they have smaller ears, so I just wanted to be a little creative, and I thought it would be kind of cute, but yeah. Sora Wolf asks, how long did you spend on average for one scene? And probably a few days for each scene, not including how long it took to script. I spent a ton of time just sitting and listening to the song and envisioning it in my head just to make sure everything was perfect, and it really took a surprising amount of time and effort, considering I hadn't written anything. <laughs> but yeah. And finally, Sakiz asks, what were your hopes and expectations for the map, and did they come true? I don't really remember what my initial hopes were, but because this map had a really unique script and covered a lot of plot points, I guess I was just hoping that the animators would really be able to capture what I was going for in a way that looked professional and was also really easy to understand. I could not have walked out more with the animators because they brought my idea to life perfectly. They worked so well with not only me, but each other. They worked super hard to make sure their parts matched up with one another's and that the map flowed together well, and I seriously cannot thank them enough for that. My expectations for this map were by far exceeded, especially considering my channel was actually pretty small when I first attempted to host the map. I could not be more proud of the final project. And finally, I'm going to be ending this super long video off by providing some of my own tips for map hosts and participants. Something that I've gotten a lot of comments on is how well the map flowed together. Map hosts, the first thing that I strongly recommend is setting up a Discord server that is mandatory for all participants to join. Not only will this make communication between you and your participants a hell of a lot easier, it will make sure that your participants are also communicating and sharing ideas with each other. It's easier for everyone to share whips with one another and to make sure that everything flows before the parts are finalized when everyone can talk about it in a group chat. It really helps remind everyone that this is, in fact, a team effort and that everyone really needs to work together in order to produce the best results. It's also just easier for you to manage everything when it's all in one place. I also strongly recommend creating specific palettes and background layouts. For example, if it is night, rather than there being a ton of confusion with what's going on with the colors and having some people darken the characters meanwhile others don't, adjust the colors on the reference sheets you have to fit the time of day and or setting. This will help color stay consistent throughout the entire project. Background layouts are also really important for keeping not only the colors consistent, but the scene. For example, had I not drawn out a small piece of the Bone Hill scene in the map, I assure you the final results would have been far different due to people using their own interpretations of the scene. Make sure you plan and draw everything out beforehand. As for the script, make sure you have an idea that you are truly passionate about, and not just an idea that you think will go far because it's trendy or something. The ideas that go the farthest are the ones that you really care about, not just what you think will whack in the views. When it comes to creating an effective script and idea, I sincerely recommend listening to your chosen audio over and over again and just envisioning the scenes playing out in your head to make sure that everything makes sense. If you're having trouble with this, make some really quick sketches or storyboards so you can really see the idea you're trying to bring to life. This will help you catch any errors with timing and such before it's too late. Also, just make sure the script is written very carefully so your participants are able to understand and see exactly what you want. And if someone is being irresponsible and isn't making their deadlines, keeps coming up with excuses, fails to provide updated work in progresses, and is just being generally difficult to work with, kick them. Communication is absolutely key, and if your animators are falling through with no good reason, you need to kick them and get someone who is more eager to be working with you instead. 
As for participants, my advice for you is really simple. Make sure you're on top of your deadlines and are also actively making an effort to communicate with your hosts instead of constantly having your hosts to reach out to you. This way, you will seem responsible and trustworthy and will have a good reputation in the community. If you have any questions about the script or you notice something that doesn't make sense to you, you need to ask. If you go on with your part and you've made an error, it can be super frustrating to have to go back and fix it or even run the risk of being kicked out completely. Make sure you're clear on absolutely everything before you finalize your part. I also suggest providing the host with lifts to make sure everything is good with them and to make sure the part flows with the others. Speaking of others, I cannot express how important it is to look at whips and parts that other people have made. This will ensure that all the parts will flow excellently together and will help you produce your best work. Having one inconsistent part can really throw off the entire thing, believe me. And that's all I have to say for now. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with me through the entirety of this video. And I know this one is super long, so I apologize for that. But yeah, I really hope I was able to be entertaining and I hope that you learned something new or interesting because of this video. But mostly, I'd like to thank everyone who helped me bring my project to life. The animators did a fantastic job and I really can't thank them enough. Also, thank you guys so much for giving this video 1 million views. I'm honestly so happy that so many of you liked the map I created and it means so much to me. Anyways, I really don't want to ramble on and I've given myself carpal tunnel for writing the script all at once and I'm kind of done with this, so yeah, thank you all, thank you all so much. I'm gonna go skedaddle and until next time.